Okay, this is a video based around uh, the concept of adding additional tone to create added depth within a given composition. We had several stamp sketches of um, kind of sky figures and some deep space sky figures in some instances. We did them in different tone scenes, uh, different tones in uh, one of the previous videos and <laughs> I did a couple of really large ones here. These are, these are half-page compositions, so I'm going to break this up and uh, not make this into like some kind of four-hour crazy video. Um, but this is an example of, um, you know, kind of adding some additional tones into a basic composition. We can kind of quit and stop our compositions at... Uh, you know, in steps like this, and that could be a finished scene for some people. Some people just like doing compositions, but if you want to really kind of push at a depth and uh, variation within a scene, then that's where you can really bring in additional tones and layer them into the uh, scenes. This one's just a very basic monochromatic and stamped out in black, you know, the imagery, and I just finished it off in some gray tones and uh, as well as black. In various values of those colors just to create some added dimension in this you can see where each one of these has kind of a vignette type of effect to really kind of frame off the scene and I've done a lot of um, paper towel masking within here um, to add additional layers of depth and uh, dimension into a already textured surface you know to bring in that extra I don't know kind of step into the process which you can do and I think it's a very effective way to kind of push the visual depth within a given scene. So uh, if you watch this video, you'll see a lot of blues laid down and a lot of tones, you know. Uh, or you can kind of skip, you know, along the way, you know, jump, you know, whatever, 10 minutes at a time. Do you see these cards kind of come along uh, in terms of some colors? I did bring in and employed some colors that I haven't used in a long time in the forms of a vivid sea brights there's an Adirondack denim but um, I don't know I was inspired by the Yahoo group and seen some different colors that people have been using and a lot of the pads they used I'm guessing you know the pads you know because of the changes in the industry and the different companies putting out different lines all the time you see a lot of colors you know that I haven't seen in a long time or completely forgot about. So I dipped into some of my own old used pads and uh, kind of used them in uh, a couple of these different compositions here. I love blue. I don't know. These ones right here probably represent about five different or, I don't know, maybe even six different shades of blue. Just layering them in there, you know, to get a little bit of extra variation or extra um, depth and saturation, you know, which can potentially happen with more the more colors you've used. Not that you have to use a certain set amount of them or you can achieve a nice rich deep saturation with um, fewer amounts, but you know, I don't know, that's just a way of going in and experimenting with whatever colors you have within a given color scheme, which is always fun to do. So, Anyways, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101 and I hope you enjoy this segment and uh, portion of the I don't know, the process of these scenes right here. I'll do some of these other scenes in uh, the next video in terms of some warm tones. Here's a purple one. I probably won't do these ones because you can already see these blue tones here. But we'll get to these scenes and we'll kind of finish them off and you'll see some different processes along the way in terms of using um, different colors, but you'll find that the, you know, the actual process of a uh, laying down these colors and kind of the different theories behind it are all the same just using some different um, uh, temperatures and hues okay we have some stamp sketches here and we are going to apply some different tones on here and some values to hopefully really push the um, the amount of visual depth and space uh, within these layouts um, as far as we can and uh, that is one of the things that I really enjoy doing um, when it comes to scenic stamping is uh, kind of uh, exploring this um, kind of aspect of uh, visual space within a two-dimensional surface, okay? Now, um, these 
layouts came from uh, the previous video and um, they're in some different types of color schemes okay as, a, as far as a foundational um, composition I have two of them that that will kind of be focused around kind of a, a sunset warm uh, color scheme I have a purple one here and this uh, grayscale just black and white piece which can go in really any direction we want to um, as far as our color scheme but the blue ones in general will take that into a nice blue color scheme you could take it into the greens or the purples depending on you know whether or not you want to add things like pink to it or violets and blue and yellow mix to form green of course so we can also go in that direction so there's a lot of different possibilities here but we're not here to talk about hue and temperature in this um, video but more uh, around the aspect of visual depth okay now we have these scenes here these foundations right here and they do have a degree of visual depth inherent in the designs themselves in this case we stamped two different values of blue but for the most part it's not as deep as um, we can make it okay now the designs have a lot of shading in them to um, define form and to give objects a three-dimensional feel but to really enhance that what we do is we go in and we add an additional tone if you're working in you know a matte piece of paper cardstock you can use colored pencils you can use pens alcohol markers on copic paper whatever okay i happen to be doing glossy cardstock here and we will apply some additional dye based inks to it but like i said you can use any type of media and these concepts will apply to all those different types of uh, um, techniques that you might use okay so anyways what i'm doing here is around this moon i want that area in there to be dark okay and i want these clouds to be lit by the moon so what we have to do is define that light source through the use of some shade so what I'm going to do is add some really light blue ink around here but being careful not to go over my moon because I want that to be the lightest um, object within the scene maybe the clouds will be just as light as they are going to be uh, they're going to represent um, light on them is going to represent the reflected light from that moon okay now i'm using a memento summer sky it's just a really pale light blue okay but now where do you add where do you choose to add some additional tone and we here we have this bank of clouds okay well inherent in the design itself there's a darker area right so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hit my darker areas and I can also see the moon is right there so maybe the clouds closest to the moon might be a little bit lighter okay but for the most part I can kind of start off just by taking my cues from the designs themselves and I'm hitting some of this really light blue in the darker areas okay so it doesn't have to be kind of a mystery as far as where to approach things I mean just naturally if you have a light bulb right here the object near it is going to be the most lit so leave some of the white of the paper there okay the difference between kind of a real experienced um, scenic stamper that's uh, or just someone that's kind of really good with lighting um, and someone that's a beginner is the beginner tends to see this bank of clouds as one solid or one area I should say to fill in equally so they kind of fill it all in like okay I'm gonna color that cloud blue okay but the only thing is between someone that's very experienced in this or someone that's really good with lighting is they just simply leave some of the white of the paper or leave some of it lighter than other areas okay so it's kind of selective shading so you can, you can say in many ways that the kind of the more experienced you do less work because you're not coloring in as much okay it's more selective shading all right now see here's the opposite 
um, thing that I'm doing as far as the area that I'm coloring on this cloud, okay? The cloud, is, the bottom side of this cloud is closest to the light. So what I'm doing is far on the far end of this cloud, okay? I'm just coloring in that part. I'm shading it in, so I'm leaving the clouds that are closest to the moon illuminated, okay? All right. And this is a really easy way to do it. This is a very light shade of blue, so I can, even with some horrible technique going like that, it really allows me to kind of spread it around. Now, you would never do that, you know. You know, you kind of want to do some gentle blending of tone like this and building it up gradually. The more gradual the buildup, the more control you have over it because you can really manipulate things. And you don't get kind of these, um, I don't know, kind of unexpected or undesired types of marks because it takes a while to kind of build up that tone in this fashion, okay? Keep it nice and ergonomic here. You can see I'm keeping my hand in a nice comfortable motion right here. And then when I want to add tone to a different area, I just simply turn my card and I keep my hands in a nice comfortable ergonomic direction and I use a very ergonomic motion like this. You can do some streaking like this if you want to. You know, so I'm not like this and going like this. This is, you know, your wrist here should always kind of be in this uh, position here. I mean, I might go and do, you know, little types of marks like this or something like that, but for the most part, I do keep it kind of ergonomic and I don't experience any stress whatsoever in my hands. This is a very light touch that I have on my color box stylus tool here. It's just, you know, it's very, I can hold it like this if I wanted to. I mean, I'm not going to, but I'm just giving you an example of the kind of the, uh, the touch that you're going after, okay? So it's very light. See this right here? It's just a very light type of motion, okay? All right, so we're already kind of achieving some depth, and that's just using one tone right now, okay? So we can hit some of those areas down here. We have these areas around the cloud and moon that are illuminated. So we already have kind of the, the basis of our kind of lighting scheme. If this area right down here was really dark and this area was lighter, no big deal. Just so long as there's a little bit of an oscillation between lights and darks, okay? There's no area that's going to be right and wrong. I mean, I could have made these clouds next to my moon darker if I wanted to, because if I do that, I'm kind of emphasizing the lightness of the moon. So you can do that for effect too, so that, you know, there's, it wouldn't be wrong to do it that way, okay? It's just whatever you want to bring an emphasis to, okay? And that could be different every time you do it. You could kind of change your, um, uh, strategies, you know, just depending on what you want your viewer to really notice within your scene, okay? Moving up into a medium blue, which is a Bahama blue here, okay? And where do you add this? I'm going to add it in the same areas, roughly, that I just added my previous color, okay? Now this Bahama blue, this next tone of blue is going on a little bit more smoothly because the page is getting a little bit saturated with my previous color. You know, some of the moisture of this is getting into the pulp. So the feel of this is a little bit different because it's a little bit more slippery than kind of going with ink on dry paper. Okay, my paper is a little bit slick at this point in time. All right, so kind of adjust the rate at which you add your color. Okay, and be a little bit more selective as far as where you place it. That way you don't get any kind of undesired marks right in the middle of your scene. But even if you do do that, you know, it blends right out because the paper is a little bit slick. And also the memento ink right here, which isn't, you know, uh, a, you know, a necessity in terms of the brand of ink or something like that but it is a little bit slippery in terms of the consistency, the viscosity of the ink is really quite 
slick and it spreads really beautifully on uh, this glossy cardstock. That being said, I've used these inks on matte cardstock and I was surprised at how easy the ink spread and blended on matte cardstock as well. I used the, the flip side of some glossy here, which is even even you know the best quality of a, a matte cardstock. Um, but it works just fine. Just kind of use your light touch and uh, allow colors to build up nice and gradually. Okay, so we can kind of see this lighting scheme appear a little bit more now. The darker we went, and you'll notice that I've left some of the clouds illuminated by the moonlight by not toning them out, okay? It's usually in the medium to darker tones where people start kind of losing all their light. It's because they color everything the exact same, okay? They take light tones, medium tones, darker tones, and they color everything in a given area. Instead of having some areas remain a little bit light, okay? Those scenes don't look bad, but they just don't have the range of um, values in their scene. And sometimes they look very effective that way, so it just depends on what you're going after. But just do remember that once you color th something over, you can't necessarily go back to a lighter tone of ink and add that back in there to regain, you know, any lightness. You know, these are transparent colors that we're working with. So the colors underneath will always kind of influence what you see on the surface, okay? So things, if you keep adding more ink, it's going to get darker, unless you're using some sort of... Uh, opaque ink like a pigment ink or something of that sort but then that would be a completely different technique okay okay we're going on with a darker blue this one is the Danube blue it's kind of a navy blue and it's not applying very quickly because the page is getting to a certain degree of uh, dampness and saturation so that ink doesn't come off of my stylus tool, my applicator, quite as fast. Which isn't a bad thing. It makes it easier to blend that way sometimes, you know, having your page really, really juicy and kind of damp. And okay, no, it's not slathered or anything like that on the surface. I can run my finger and maybe I'd pick up a little bit of ink, but it's not going to leave kind of a streak of, uh, you know, uh, lightness in there by taking any ink off, okay? It's not, it's not soaking, in other words. It just feels a little bit damp. Okay, now this is where I might start using some tools, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, now this sponge tip right here is, it's kind of a, this, I think this one's the leaf tip. I usually use ovals, but it's all the same. Um, I think I can get in here easier with a certain type of technique where this tip right here might not be the most conducive for certain areas, okay? In terms of creating kind of more defined textures. So let's see right here. This is my tool right here. Paper towels tend to have a certain grain to it. If you rip it one way, it rips real straight and smooth. And if you rip it the opposite way, you get kind of this more irregular, jagged edge. And that's the edge that I like, okay? Let's take a look at some of these clouds right here. We have this kind of bank of clouds right here. Now, see this area of clouds, they all kind of merged into one, which is what you want when you're laying these clouds out in terms of uh, composition, all right? But I don't necessarily want it to look like those clouds are all in the same, um, in the same plane, the visual depth, okay? So I might want these clouds in the foreground area here, the ones that are lower on the horizon, to be closer to us. So what I might do is I might mask some of these off like this, okay? And what I'll do is I can add in some tones right in the back here, and hopefully it makes this 
front area stand out a little bit more. I do want some dimension and depth within that foreground too, but I also want to kind of create a nice separation between foreground cloud and back, I don't know, maybe midground clouds, you know, not so much background clouds. Okay, kind of just adding that right on down like so. You can see where I'm adding a lot of it on the paper towel right here, right? So I'm not going up here, I'm kind of going down here. But we can see, let's take a look and see how this is going. See if it's adding that visual depth and separation that we want. See that right there? These clouds kind of pop out a little bit more towards us, visually speaking. Okay, we can kind of mask off, we'll go up, take this and we'll mask it off up here to create a little bit more separation between cloud and kind of open sky, space, whatever. maybe maybe like this it's pretty good Sometimes you happen to rip your paper towel just right and it seems to work out just fine without doing any additional tearing. Sometimes you don't, but most of the times you can kind of find an area along your tear that'll match up really nicely with the cloud. I'm not looking for perfection or anything like that, quite the contrary um, in terms of that, but I generally want the contour to match up, I don't know, reasonably so. something like that. So yeah, a nice little glow working back there. Maybe I'll leave that just like that. I can. I was thinking about adding more tone right here, but I think I like that glow working in there now. But anyway, see, we're starting to kind of push space a little bit. We have kind of our lighting scheme. Maybe the moon seems like it's kind of glowing and casting light on certain areas of those clouds. I think I want to darken this cloud a little bit. It was a little bit too light, I think. Okay, we'll go something like that. I want to add a little bit of richness to this blue. It's not doesn't have the characteristic that I want yet, okay? Nothing against those blue colors. They're a great foundation, but let's try something like this Caribbean blue. It's a little bit of a warm blue from Marvy. I don't know if it'll work. We'll see, you know? That's the fun thing about it. In terms of uh, it, meaning kind of the... Uh, the idea of kind of exploring different um, colors, in this case, exploring uh, temperature, this blue, this Caribbean blue, the thing that makes something a little bit more Caribbean blue is it has a little bit more kind of a yellow in it, which gives, gives it that little bit of a green tint tinge or tint. So yeah, it's warming up my clouds a little bit. Having that little bit of green in there. See what it's doing down here? That area kind of glows, doesn't it? Colors on the, uh, that are right next to each other on the, uh, color wheel. 
you know, like blues and greens on one side of the uh, wheel. Blues kind of go into the violet tones, but if you have a little bit of green or analogous colors next to each other, what they do is visually create a color glow. And I think I can make this glow just a little bit just by tweaking the color scheme a little bit. Okay. Color scheme, temperature scheme too. So that has a different feel to it, doesn't it? In terms of the temperature. Not that it looked bad with blue, but it just it needed to be um, it didn't quite have the emotional characteristic that I was going for. Okay, so we have that right now. Alright, let's keep going. Um, I like a really dark blue in my blue color schemes. Let's try that. Let's go on with a Prussian blue. Prussian blue is I always like this description that I saw in a clothing catalog one time. It was, um, oh my gosh, what was it called? I think it was called Midnight Blue or Blue Almost Black Blue or something like I don't know, it was something like that. But I really like those tones, you know, that those colors that are, you know, such a dark version of something that they're practically black. I find them to be really rich and mysterious. Okay, Prussian blue is one of the darkest blues that I've uh, come across in uh, kind of the rubber stamping world. Um, Trying to think of some other ones out there. Um, I think denim maybe used to be pretty dark in terms of the Adirondack line of pads from Ranger. Uh, hmm. Can't think of others that are like this um, off the top of my head. If I knew about them, I'd probably have them. I tend to like the lines that have a lot of different versions of blue. There was this real early line of um, rubber stamp pads called uh, Vivid. I believe they were by Colorbox, but they were some of the first pads out there, raised eye base pads. They almost had kind of a like a spongy, you know, foam um, pad to them. But they also had they had a ton of different blue shades of blue and temperatures of blue, and those ones were really nice. They've long since been discontinued, but they were really nice. Okay, let's go back to our mask. I think. I like a little bit more dimension in my sky too, in terms of that empty area in there. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use a torn paper towel. Okay. See that one gave me too straight of an edge. I want that. I like that varied look. Okay, let's get a little bit more texture going on in the background here. Okay, let's see which way do I want to do this. Um, let's go back a little bit. Let's use some medium tone blues. Okay, this is a light blue from Marvy. Mix and match, you know, just, uh, you can pull out all your blue pads, you know. This one's dye-based, you know. Not so much of a, like a pigment ink pad or something like that, but put on, put on all your, uh, 
raised iPads and just do a lot of mixing and matching, you know? That's all I'm doing. This isn't some kind of scientific, you know, application of color. Okay. I really can barely see this one. I might have to go darker. But, start off light. See if you like it. You can always go darker. Yeah, it's really barely visible. Okay, great. I did a good job, which means I got a full saturation of that. But, I need to add even more in here now. Okay, let's go something like this. Okay, let's go back to... Mm, okay, let's go to that Prussian. I was wondering if, if it was going to be too dark, but let's, let's see. So it's kind of giving it that little texture right there, you know, which might kind of look like uh, something a little bit more like maybe deep space or something. I don't know. It's just kind of an interesting visual texture too. You don't have to, you know, analyze it or something like that. kind of not a logical process or anything like that. I'm, I mean, it is visual or something like that, but um, I'm just kind of feeling my way through a scene when I'm doing it. I'm making things up on the fly and deciding, you know, does that look neat? You know, basically, does it look good or not? Um, and if it looks good to your eye, then that's all you really need to... Uh, you know, that's all. That, that's all that's really needed in terms of uh, I don't know whatever justifying a mark. You know, and just have fun. They say that uh, art, or I don't know, not they say that, but I heard a quote one time that said, "Art is what takes place between the initial concept and the final result." And, I don't know, I tend to like that saying in terms of it kind of being, it's about the process and about allowing things to develop. You know, you might have kind of a destination, you know, in mind as far as, um, you know, where you want a certain card to go in general, but it's like a journey, you know, you can kind of have a destination in mind, but, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get there, and maybe when you get closer to it, maybe you decide that you don't want to go there after all. So it's good to be able to change up, you know, and make new decisions, you know, change your itinerary at least a little bit, and just kind of find out what happens. But, I don't know, see those little marks in there? That kind of made that area a little bit more varied and in my opinion, a little bit deeper um, in terms of visual depth. Let's see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of hitting those same areas that I got with my medium and lighter tones, okay? I'm kind of staying in those areas, you know, for the most part. Okay, all right. Let's try black. now. I'm taking a little bit more time on this card. On these other ones, I'm going to go a little bit faster. But I, I want you to see the, you know, the process of uh, kind of laying this out right now. Okay, now let's see here. Let's go back and let's introduce some black into the scene. I like going all the way to black, even though I didn't use black to stamp out my imagery. I think it will add kind of a nice dimension um, to the scene. It's uh, kind of nice in terms of uh, kind of adding a nice vignette around the uh, objects within the composition. I love the richness of the t 
tones when you lay black over something it's kind of you're not just laying black over it you know the less you use of black it kind of it reads more as like a, a gray so it's really more of a gray scale um, application of tone really more so than just say you're adding black right if you know what I mean so you're using black ink, yes, but you're applying gray, in other words. Just like that's the same thing with all these other tones, you know. You might be using a Prussian blue, but, you know, if you kind of tap it off and you're using it and using it and using it, you might be adding a much lighter version of any existing color that you happen to be working with. But again, going back to that um, little quote, you know, about you know, initial concept and final result. Sometimes if you have too much in mind in terms of a, a final kind of destination, it can kind of complicate the process at times. Um, because if you're constantly trying to get somewhere that you haven't been before, okay, in a certain composition or whatever, um, that's the final, okay? So, I mean, if you haven't done it before, then we really don't know what that's going to look like. We might have kind of an, an idea of the feel we're going after or something like that, but visually, I don't know. I just say, let things happen. I mean, I had no idea I was going to put those things, you know, those little flourishes, or I don't know, it's not a flourish, but those little masked off bands of a uh, tone in the background, you know, when I first started it, but I think it looks pretty good, you know? And I don't know what this scene is going to look like, you know, at all. You know, I have a pretty good idea of, you know, you know, the basics of it right now, but, um, I'm really just letting it develop. There's all those other, you know, types of sayings about, you know, it's better to travel hopefully than arrive, you know. It's, you know, everything's that's talking about process, you know. If you have kind of one eye on the destination, then you only have one eye with which to work. So right now when I'm doing this, all I'm doing is I'm concentrating on applying this tone to this one little area and getting that right. I'm not really worried about too much about it how it's going to affect the overall and uh, you know then I'm trying to get you know something to a specific area okay see that is that area in the back I mean that's kind of coming around now I think a little bit of tone around the sides to add a little bit of a vignette in that area frame things off a little bit. Okay, coming around pretty nicely some decent visual depth in there. I do want to create more of a separation between that moon and these clouds though. Somehow. Let's see, I'm taking a look at it right now. Trying to assess. Okay, I think we do need to put a little bit of tone down there in those clouds perhaps. Just a touch to separate them clouds from that distance-wise and visually a little bit, okay? So just going back to my lightest of blues, the Memento Summer Sky. Lay that down like so. Yeah, something like that. Makes the moon stand out just a touch. And I think some temperature on that moon would look pretty good. Um, 
I don't know, we can add kind of a warmish tinge to it, a greenish tinge maybe. I don't want yellowy yellow on it. It would be too yellow, I think, so. Uh, I don't know. Kind of all ponder that. Here's a little bit of that Caribbean blue again. Maybe I can add a little bit more of that. I want to bring more emphasis to that moon, so maybe what I can do is I can knock down some of this brightness down here, okay? So let's go and add some tone over it, okay? Not using it like a coloring book, but adding some variation. So I'm just adding some really super light shades of that color down here, okay? See, doing that, I mean, we have a uh, variation down there. Some temperature, but it's just not quite as light now, okay? And I think that kind of helped this area in here kind of separated it in terms of uh, value from that. Distance-wise, too, it's saying that, you know, the clouds that are closer, you know, are reflecting more of that light, I think. Same thing over here. A little bit too much light, I think. These clouds above them are a little bit less illuminated and light. Okay, do something like that. I think it's kind of a relaxing look, very kind of a tranquil. Kind of a tranquil, welcoming, I don't know type of feeling to it, maybe. Would I want to be kind of outside at night, on a warm summer's night, gazing up in the sky, looking at something like this? And I think so. And if that's the case, I think that would be, a, that's a successful card. And certainly if you had fun making it in the process. Okay, so we have that. All right, we'll add some special effects to that later on, but I think that we have a decent amount of depth here using that. And that's without going into anything else yet, which will come later. Uh, let me do something here, too. I'm looking at this. Let's go a little bit darker. I'm using the Memento. Danube blue. Kind of coming in here like so. Okay. All right, we have something like that. Okay, let's look at these other scenes that we have here. I'm gonna come back to this one, but that's that for now. Okay. So remember, I mean, these clouds and this whole scene kind of look like you know, it was certainly reminiscent of these other blue ones in terms of, uh, you know, your general type of take on the clouds, but I think these clouds right here now have some little bit of separation in here, okay? And there's this little bit of visual distancing between this cloud and the background by putting in that tone around it, which is the same thing we can do on this one right here, okay? Let's try it on this big one here. We have kind of a bigger opportunity for um, variation within a half page scene. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, let me try to make this one a little bit faster. I say big quick, but never hurry. So I'll try not to hurry on this one. But let's get some tones down pretty fast. Okay, spiral galaxy. We want those kind of arms to remain nice and light so that they stand out. The clouds around here will still have some variations within the clouds in terms of light and dark. So let's just get to it, okay? 
Just the memento, summer sky. This one is going to be one that's really fun, adding in some uh, different tones. I mean, uh, not different tones, but uh, textures using gel pens. Okay, love those kind of galaxy types of uh, scenes with the. Uh, give me a lot of opportunity for um, little special effects, little you know, sparkly details using things like gel pens and. Uh, Pigment inks. Okay, I'm going to make this go even faster. If you have any reinker fluid for your lightest of blues, and I'd recommend a reinker for your lightest of blues. When you're doing scenic stamping, I don't know, you tend to use a lot of blue, and when you're building up colors, the lighter tones tend to give you the most amount of coverage within a scene, even though a scene might not be totally dominated by residual light blues because we've gone over it with medium blues and whatnot, but light blues are always going to be the foundation for darker blues, be it matte paper, glossy paper, whatnot. I happen to be using a Adirondack Lights Ocean Aqua, but any color that you happen to be working with, if you have a summer sky reinker, use that one. If you only have kind of a medium tone blue, you can dilute it with a little bit of water and just start going in here, okay? So let's see. Yeah, see this is really fast. It's very, very juicy. Gotta be careful about it, you know? Maybe don't put as much in there as I did, but you can really get a, a fast, wide amount of coverage just by putting that ink onto your sponge applicator, okay? On this one right here, we have the larger version of clouds in conjunction with the smaller version of clouds, okay? Larger ones down here, closer to us. Lower on the horizon represents uh, objects that are closer to us. So I'll create a little bit of separation you know, between the larger ones and the smaller ones in the back. And then I will top lit light the clouds down below by just simply coloring in only the bottom portions of them, okay? Okay, so something like this. You can kind of see my color scheme, or my lighting scheme starting to come around. Color scheme is going to be pretty easy. It's just kind of blue. Okay, don't lose some of the uh, highlights uh, on your clouds around on the perimeter. or in the sky, in the top portions of it. It's kind of on the perimeter, too. All right, that is Memento Summer Sky. All right, Marvy, number 10 blue. It's kind of like the uh, Bahama blue from Memento. I'm going to use the Marvy one. It'll go a little bit faster because it's a thinner ink than Bahama Blue, so it, I think it will soak in and penetrate the paper a little bit faster. But I'm only kind of going for expediency, you know, due to you know the fact that I'm kind of recording this for you guys. In other words, I don't want you to have to sit through a three-hour video or something like that. Not that anyone has to, you know, but if you want to see the entire process, let's make it a little bit of a faster one. Thicker inks tend to apply in a very smooth and easy-to-blend uh, application. Thinner inks tend to penetrate a little bit faster, but as long as I have a foundation of the thicker ink, the thinner inks apply and blend very easy and smoothly, okay? Can you see my uh, lighting scheme starting to come around a little bit more? Let's 
Let's get a little bit of tone into this uh, spiral galaxy. I don't want it stark white. Okay. Okay, be careful about your illuminated areas, your lit areas. They're simply lit, you know, from the very fact that you're not toning them out. Okay. You can go to your expensive masks right here and mask out some of those clouds. Okay. Create a little separation between, you know, within the, the bank of clouds, you know, just for a little bit of visual depth and separation. Okay, some of these clouds might be closer to us than others. It doesn't have to all be on the same plane, okay? Maybe this foreground cloud is closer than this cloud right here. If I want to do that, then I just mask off the first cloud, or that cloud. And I create kind of a little bit of a shadow behind it by masking it off like so. And this one will stand out a little bit closer to us, okay? So we're creating that visual depth. And it doesn't really matter which one, you know, if you wanted to do that, it doesn't matter which one's closer to you. You're just kind of defining. You're saying, okay, it's this one, okay? It doesn't mean that the other one shouldn't have been the one in front. Uh, it just really doesn't matter, uh, in my opinion. All right. Go to a navy blue, go to the Danube blue. I think the Danube blue is the one that I stamped that out in, okay? So this one right here, kind of a navy blue. It looks more like a dark, I don't know, cornflower blue though to me than navy. Eh, it's a little bit less than navy, maybe, but. Yeah, I think this is the one that I stamped out that imagery in. I don't know. I just stamped it out like 24 hours ago, but I already kind of forgot. Okay, this is the color that seems to be kind of blending that spiral galaxy in with the surrounding area too. Okay. Now this is a half page scene, so yeah, it takes a little bit longer. Well, we're talking about like this, you know, twice the size of a quarter page, so. But it doesn't take too long. And it's kind of fun. It's almost like you're 
I don't know, when you're doing this type of thing, it's almost like you're kind of defining form. And while it's a two-dimensional, you know, flat surface that we're working on, things start to look a little bit more dimensional, so it's almost like you're, you know, it's like a, like a form of, I don't know, visual sculpting or something like that. You know, because you're changing the forms around, you're making them look a little bit more dimensional. Dimensional and hopefully interesting or more interesting, you know. You're letting them kind of achieve, I don't know, their full potential. You're working them towards their full potential. At least in one aspect of it, you know. Depth. Depth and values and forms less two-dimensional and flat, okay? It's real dark right there. I need to balance it out around in these other areas, but we'll do that. starting to come around for me too. Usually when I get to a certain color, it's usually one of the darker colors, that's when kind of the scene starts to kind of there's a unifying type of feel, I guess, that starts to happen. It's usually whatever color I stamped out my darkest colors in. When I get to that color in the toning process, working through the lighter ones, that's when everything kind of comes together for me. All right, let's do some masking up here. I feel like I'm starting to kind of get the, uh, I don't know, the, uh, the feel for what this scene might look like to at this point in time. You know, I know what the composition is, but kind of the more for me, the more important characteristics are starting to kind of reveal themselves, you know, when I start to see um, the lighting and shading, you know, kind of the more, I don't know, those more kind of emotional characteristics of a scene might start to uh, come out now. And those are the things that I really enjoy watching develop. Sometimes I don't, I don't know, I don't, sometimes I don't see those things until, you know, really deep into the process where there's just kind of a lot of curiosity up until then. Sometimes some of those, that curiosity might be, you know, is this scene going to come out okay? every now and then. I mean, I, I, I'd have a lot more questions, but I just, I just, I generally know that as long as you kind of keep working something to, you know, it'll kind of come along. I haven't really seen any scene that, where someone shows it to me and I think, okay, that thing went off the rails and it's never coming back. It's usually a matter of, you know, I would add a little bit more of this or more of that or just, to, you know, you know, tweak your shadows or something a little bit more or, you know, add a little bit more background or something like that, you know, just to develop it a little bit more for things to start to come together.
All right, kind of adding that little texture in that sky again up there. I don't know. I think it's a, kind of a fun little texture in there. Uh, let's see, let's create a little separation here. Uh, all right, what is this? I think those, this is just blue, I think. It's kind of a navy blue. It's the Marvy one. Might as well use them if I have them. Might as well put them to work. If you don't have them, don't sweat. Just don't. Just use what you have. I said I was going to make this one a little bit faster, but I don't think I did that. <laughs> I'm having fun. There's all these little kind of things that I'm adding in here, these little kind of separations within that whole big bank of clouds. And I've kind of gone crazy with it. I've kind of separated them here, 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 and here. You know, so it's like this twisting type of thing kind of working in here. That separation within that space right in here. I don't know. Why not? You know, that's what kind of stamping's about. Just let it let it take you on a ride, you know, let your scenes go and give them their freedom to uh whatever, express whatever they need to express to you. separation between these clouds and that area and there, I think. Let's make it a little bit darker, I think. I've been thinking about adding uh, or doing a full page or doing full page scenes but I'll tell you after you do one of these half page ones I'm thinking, that's a lot of tapping going on in there although I love finishing off whole page scenes and adding all those little special effects to them that really kind of make a card come to life sometimes Old gel pen accents Metallic pens, accents, you can use glitter, flourishes. Okay, all right. So a lot of variation in there. It's kind of bright down here, maybe too bright. But we'll leave it for now. Let's try some black, okay? I'll show you what it looks like on one side of the scene, and you can do a little compare contrast.
Okay, you see uh, there's a lot more depth on this side in terms of the value scale. Um, let's see. brighter you are, the darker, lighter, sorry, the lighter you want some area or object to look, you have to kind of use the opposite value, um, kind of within the composition or next to it, okay? So if I want that galaxy to seem nice and bright, or light, then I have to make this area right here seem dark, okay? Okay, so there it is on one side, and here it is on the other side. A little bit more, I don't know, variation on this side, I would say. Okay. All right. <laughs> on my previous video where we're talking about easy uh, value schemes, it was really easy because I just did it in gray and black. On these we're doing uh, you know, twice as many colors with all the variations of blue. And I haven't even gotten to the uh, Sun City ones. Maybe I'll get to that next. I'll do two blue ones. Too cool and too warm, maybe. Let's do something like this. Okay, let's kind of come into the uh, the right side here. kind of creating that little vignette, okay? So see, as I add it down here, I'm kind of being more perimeter-oriented. I'm kind of moving my hand a little bit, you know? I'm kind of applying a very light grayscale applications of uh, black. Then when I ink, I'm kind of starting on the outside edge again and working my way in. That way I have it really wet on the outside, and as I move in, it becomes lighter um, with each tap, so I get that transition of dark to light. Let's go for a little more textural variation within the sky. The 
thing about this, how I'm adding this to add these little textures like that in the sky, if I'm doing it in a grassy field with greens and browns, that's the exact same technique that you would use in a, a grassy area, okay? So if this isn't, isn't some kind of sky technique or anything like that, you can, you know, use it for, you know, a lot of different applications. You can do torn towel, paper towel for mountains in the distance or whatever. You've probably seen those types of scenes before. Variation. It's kind of creating this little oscillation of light and dark in here, too. We have lights and darks and lights and darks again, all in various degrees of light and dark, too. I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, I wonder if this could go any other way. I think in this case, I think that does tend to look like it's up and down to me. But when it comes to skies, I mean, what's right, you know, what's right side up and what's upside down, really, it can go so many different ways. Like this one right here, you can have that moon kind of rising up, you know, from behind those clouds, but... You can also be doing this thing where it's kind of, you know, either rising or setting below that bank of clouds. It looks like an eyeball this way, you know, like a dragon's uh, eye or something like that. Okay. There we go, right here, we have a full value range in here. Some additional colors would be good, but we'll just leave it at that right there. This is going to look fantastic with some, uh, I think I'll add some splatter painting up there, in terms of uh, that. Maybe do some light beams coming out of there, I'm not really sure. Maybe not really so much from the Milky Way, but we could for a dramatic effect. But let's just leave it like that for right now and decide on some other tones later. All right, now I'm going to take a quick break, allow these to set a little bit, and uh, maybe come back with one of these other ones, either the purple or the uh, kind of the sunset colors, and do something with that. Let's do something with this too. Yeah, this one's kind of a you know, really just textured, you know, pretty flat surface, and we'll try to bring in some dimension on this one too, okay? But this one's the one I'm really looking forward to right here. It's kind of the, right over the alto cumulus uh, clouds right here, and we have the sun, so I think some beams streaming across that is going to look uh, kind of interesting. But we shall see. Okay, I'm back. I've let these dry about a day. I got busy doing some other things. And it has occurred to me that I should try to use some different uh, shades or shades and tones of blue based on what I've seen on the new Stampscapes Facebook group, Stampscapes. Two, 
Uh, you can look that up on Facebook if you're on there. It's an active group of uh, stampers based around um, challenges and exchanges. Um, but there has been some amazing work up there that I've seen. Um, some that I've been familiar with, but I haven't seen in a few years, and others, you know, completely new. And uh, some really amazing pieces up there. But um, I'm pulling out some old, well, I don't know. The Marvy inks are also discontinued, but you can get them in re-inkers still, but just using them with blank pads. But um, I have a vivid ultramarine here, an Adirondack denim, and a Seabright's sailboat blue, and I'm just going to dip into these and give them a try. Now the vivid pad is really, really old, but I just kind of did a little bit of a test, and it seems to still have some... Uh, ink in it, so I'm going to try it out. So, you know, whenever you're doing any of these types of um, uh, applications of ink, you know, when you're layering them and whatnot, you can really just, I don't know, just try out whatever you have and uh, see how it goes. Okay, now this ink has set up on me, um, I think at this point in time it's over 24 hours, so it has dried to a bit of a dull sheen. Okay, you can see I'm just putting on some of this, I'm um, applying some of this ultramarine here. And um, it looks considerably darker, okay, than some of my other areas. But see, I mean, even this is black, this looks darker than that, right? But if I spray this um, like I usually do, the end result will be that all of these inks right here will look as saturated and deep in terms of an application as they were, as they looked um, when the inks were wet. Okay, so I have to kind of keep that in mind, and and I know that that's you know what it's going to look like. It's still kind of you know I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like in the end result, but I have a pretty good idea just based on experience, you know, I, I, and you saw it just, you know, a minute ago if you've been watching this, you know, straight through that uh, these inks look a lot more saturated, of course, when they're wet. Now, the Marvy inks alone, if you use them on most brands of papers, they look fairly saturated and they don't dry to that dull sheen, but a lot of inks do on certain types of papers, but the great equalizer to all of that is just to spray your scenes after you're done and uh, or before it dries or even after it dries. I mean, I've had, you know, a lot of these uh, scenes sitting out for a while and, uh, you know, that I've done um, in these videos and whatever, you know, a lot of times I just kind of um, consolidate my processes and I just spray them all at once. I just did some recent carding up of uh, a lot of scenes and I just sprayed everything all at once. But um, anyways, uh, that being said, when I sprayed everything, uh, you know, everything looked nice and deep and vibrant and, uh, you know, you don't have to, you know, kind of catch the uh, ink before it dries or anything like that. From my experience, I mean, there might be some other combinations of papers and inks that, you know, you might want to spray before it dries, but I, I don't, I haven't found uh, the need to, uh, you know, for expediency as far as um, uh, spray sealing um, your scenes. And when I'm talking about spray sealing, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's things like um, workable fixatives, which are, is an art uh, type of uh, spray, or you can just use uh, like your Krylon Crystal Clear General Crafting uh, Spray. I happen to get uh, a Krylon UV spray recently, and that works really good too. I guess the UV can potentially help uh, keep your um, scenes from uh, maybe dulling out with the uh, light exposure a little bit, but this is a Blair Spray Fix. This one's a Krylon, just your general crystal clear. I don't know, I have my UV spray somewhere. I must have, I don't know, where I was spraying my scenes, always spray outside, outdoors, you know, with plenty of ventilation, of course. Okay, now, as I'm applying this blue here, um, 
I really like this ultramarine. Ultramarine is probably my favorite blue. Just in terms of a general color, I'm talking about watercolors and oil paints and whatnot. And I kind of forgot about that until I saw someone's version of an, an Impress Ink Ultramarine. It looks a little bit different than this one, but um, I don't know. It's generally very, very rich and deep and dark and I don't know. I love blue tones, so rich, deep, and dark does not hurt. Okay, but you can see the difference between here. I've used it here and gone up there. I don't know. We don't have to use it the same everywhere, but um, you know, if you want to, you can always apply more if you want. Um, just if you want to go for a little bit of variation and you don't want it everywhere, then certainly don't do it, you know? That goes with any tone of ink. You can, you don't even have to go this dark, you know, right here. The darker I go, the potentially, the more, uh, depth you can achieve, but it doesn't mean everything has to have, like, maximum depth. You can go for something like more of a pastel type of finish and just stick with your kind of lighter to medium tones if you want to. So you're just always kind of assessing um, as, you know, during the process and you're, you know, you want to base your kind of uh, decisions around your general um, aesthetics, you know, go with whatever you like. If you like kind of more of a softer look, then don't go this dark. All personal preference. And, I don't know, maybe you like You'd like to do some dark in one time, and the next time you want it more, you know, soft and kind of pastel-like. So, I don't know. It's a fun thing about stamping. You can kind of just change things up, do the same types of scenes, similar, different color schemes, and really change things around every time you do it. Just whatever you want to express, you know, that's, uh, the possibilities are right, wide open for the most part. Okay, uh, let's see, let's go for some more of those kind of uh, textural types of uh, torn paper looks somewhere in the sky maybe, thinking about right here now that I'm using my Ultramarine. I'll work some into that uh, galaxy, I think. Get a little bit of that texture in there. Okay. See, things are a little bit more varied up here. Um, when you do that type of thing, or that, I mean, it's good to be smooth too. But um, oh, I tend to be in a little bit more more into texture. I, I don't know. I I guess it oscillates. I, I like I do like things to be to have a smooth um, application, but. That being said, I'm a big fan of texture too, so I usually go for a little bit of both. And I think things can come up a little bit more varied that way. So, and again, with this kind of texture here, we're, we are going for um, kind of the spatial visual depth. So, kind of laying down these different textures can kind of uh, create... Um, a little bit of a separation between the layers of depth. Okay. Something like that. Okay, let's put one right here, too. I'm finding this uh, ultramarine to be very, very deep blue, so I'm thinking I might be able to get some texture even in the darkest of areas over the top of a black, you know, which is, can, you know, really be potentially darker than any blue, so. It just comes to show you that the ultramarine is pretty dark. 
don't know if you can see that variation right there. A little bit. I'm looking at my camera. Okay. Um, I don't know if you realize how old this pad is right here. This. Viv I don't know when Vivid Pads were discontinued. They were one of the first raised iBase pads out there on the market. I mean, I didn't buy that, you know, that day or something like that. It might have been three years after it was out. I, I don't know. But this pad is probably, I don't know, it's got to be a good 20 years old. I don't know, they just, uh, they just discontinued them at some point in time. I... I really like the material on the pad. I would prefer the pad to be a little bit bigger than this. But that pad is one of those, it's this weird kind of dense foam style of pad. The earlier pads like that, um, I don't know, that was their solution to keeping their ink from, you know, on a raised IBS pad from running out of kind of a, a less dense Cush, uh, cushion or felt material or whatever and I don't know I always like that style just like Marvy uses foam um, fabric I don't know I guess there's different types of fabrics but um, I don't know if fabric pads last or can last I guess they could but I'm not sure if all of them would but uh, you know, I'm not sure if they'd quite um, retain the same kind of characteristics as it did, or it had, when it was brand new, like a foam pad potentially can. You know, like this one. See, it's kind of like really dense. Whatever it is, I don't know, but the pads are nice, unless it's kind of disintegrating like, you know, some of my Marvy ones did, but after a really long lifespan, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess the foams can kind of crumble a little bit, but I, I tend to think they last a little bit longer than uh, felt, especially if the felt is getting uh, kind of heavy usage. Sometimes you get those little stringy bits, you know, and you ink up a stamp and that's got a little bit on there. I haven't really run into that with uh, even a material like this, but I don't even know if anyone uses that type of material anymore besides the Marvy blank pads. But anyways, yeah, uh, Vivid pads were, you know, they were pretty popular when they came out. There wasn't a whole lot out, else out there, but um, there were other types of pads that came in and, uh, I don't know, there were the new kids on the block and kind of you know, I don't know, or enticing color names and whatnot, so you just kind of saw uh, Vivids kind of disappear from the uh, market. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was Clear Snap, so. I don't know, but some great colors, I don't know, maybe Clear Snap, maybe they have different lines of pads now, but with the same colors, I don't know. Doing the same thing. I'm just kind of reiterating what I did with some previous colors. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I should have done that. I should have just grabbed all of my blue tones and inks and pads that I had and, you know, just kind of experiment with that. And I kind of largely do. I mean, I, I, I use a lot of what I have in, in these videos. I kind of started moving away from that a little bit just because I don't want to be using pads or material, a lot of materials that where you have to say, okay, I'm using this now, but you can't get it anywhere. But really, this is more to illustrate just kind of making do with what you have or you making use of what you have even more so. And things don't have to be specifics, okay? I'm using a dark blue here. Use your dark blues. If you don't have a dark blue, then put a blue down and maybe add a black over it or change the uh, 
the hue, temperature a little bit, move into a turquoise if you have it, you know, and so on and so forth. All right, that was vivid, and that really added quite a bit to it. It's, it has a little bit of a different characteristic than, uh, say, the Marvy blue and Prussian blue. This is a denim. Denim is the Adirondack one. I always liked that color because of the, uh, I don't know, the deep saturation of it, and uh, I don't know, it has a bit of a temperature change, you know, moving into a bit of the green, uh, having a green tinge to it. So let's see if it's even working. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, I thought it had a bit more of a green tinge to it. I don't know, I still have a lot of the ultramarine that I was just using on the same tip here, because I don't switch out my tips if I'm moving into darker tones, but, um, I don't know, it looks pretty good. You know, for me, I can never have enough blue. Which doesn't mean you have to use a billion different blues, but for me, I, I, I love... Blue, uh, tones of all types, vivid, you know, going back to them, they, I think, when I was playing around with them in an earlier video from, I don't know, two years ago maybe, I was playing around with uh, dye-based pads and I used a lot of the blue tones and vivid had several different uh, shades and, you know, tones of blue, a lot of warm tones, as well as the, kind of the more cooler natural straight blue. All right, denim. adding a nice shade. It's I'm finding this denim is kind of a a nice shade to kind of knock some objects back in terms of uh, maybe intensity. It's kind of a I don't know. It, it seems like it's kind of a duller dark blue. Um, not in terms of interest, but in terms of intensity. Where the ultramarine might have been a very bright blue. Part of the uh, um, kind of language of color, you know, besides hue, which is the color, value, which is the relative light and dark. You have temperature, warm and cool, but another component is intensity, and that's bright and dull, okay? So all those characteristics, if you kind of have a bit of a range of um, all of those different characteristics, it can kind of add quite a bit of um, kind of visual um, visual, what word am I looking for? Kind of a um, well, the visual range, it can add a, a and extend out your visual range within a given composition. It doesn't have to be scenic stamping, but anything. So potentially, it can add to a more varied surface and rich surface as a result. But that being said, I mean, you could go for something that has the same, you know, range over everything, and that has its own type of characteristic to it. It doesn't have the range, you know, but um, it can have its own kind of look. So one thing's not better than the other, but I'm just saying that potentially, you know, the potential is greater in terms of a range of, uh, you know, uh, surface characteristics. All 
All right, so this is kind of surprising me. I, I like that kind of duller look down here just to kind of contrast against that kind of brighter glowing area of this one here. But if I didn't have it, I wouldn't miss it, okay? So play around with your different tones. Now this one's really, uh, I think there was a... Seabrights, I think, turned into Adirondack lights. No, Adirondack brights, sorry. Yeah, Seabrights, you know. If I'm not mistaken, I think they were the same exact colors. They just, you know, changed the name for marketing purposes. Everyone knew Adirondacks, but... Seabrights and whatnot, you know, they were... Just like uh, seashells, um, it didn't really... It, there wasn't like a real big draw in terms of uh, creating a lot of care, uh, curiosity with that naming convention, so they switched it to Adirondacks. But this one is kind of just a general neutral blue. But it seems kind of nice. I can't hardly see what I'm doing. It's more of like a cobalt. I guess it's similar to this one, maybe. The Marvy Light Blue, but slightly different. It's, okay, this one is, again, it's not as bright. Which, in this case, I like, because it's given me some variation here. I'm going to knock that cloud down here. It was... It was too bright. It was too similar to this one up here, I thought. So these are the little adjustments, you know, that I'm making. But see, if I want some of that lightness to remain down there, just, you know, I'm going to keep it. Uh, unless I think it should be toned out. But these are the little subtle adjustments that you can make um, when doing things or that you might run into when doing a scene or doing the coloring of a scene. Doesn't mean that you have to struggle over those decisions, though, you know. Just add a little bit of tone down like that, okay? And then if you like it, then you can keep going more, but see, I mean, it's it's such a slow, gradual application that you can really see things develop slowly. So you don't get those, I don't know, you avoid as many kind of uh, unpredictable, undesirable types of marks if you kind of work in kind of the manner like I'm doing. I'm doing it very gradually and kind of methodically like this, but that being said, it's not kind of a boring thing or something like that. I just have a lot of control over it and it's like, you know, instead of a knob, you know, to make an analogy, if you have a knob that has kind of ten spots on it, you don't have to jump from, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, Imagine a knob with, you know, a hundred or a thousand things. So you're just kind of moving it up one step at a time and making those kind of more incremental marks, all right? So you can kind of watch it and uh, observe what's kind of going on. And you can make your adjustments accordingly, okay? Accordingly and carefully, all right. I'm even putting some tone over that. You know, some of my galaxy, uh, you know, arms or whatever you'd call them, spiral arms. Okay, so we have that. All right, so we have. We're creating this illusion of these objects being our light source. Okay. Um. I've used quite a bit of color, okay? But let's do something now. Let's play around with this one, okay? And I'll go back to the blue ones, but um, I'm just going to show you, okay, if you people didn't watch the, uh, the previous video, uh, or one of those, I was doing um, some easy tonal applications in terms of adding shade 
and increasing my kind of uh, notion of my light sources in a scene actually being the light source, okay? <laughs> in terms of uh, contrast, okay? We're not putting a light bulb in the back of our scene and shining it through or something like that, but you want to give the illusion of cast light. So this is just a black and white scene right here, okay? So just to show you that, I mean, this was a very large scene too. We're talking about a half page scene, so those take a little bit longer, but all right, I'm cleaning off some of my blue out of uh, one of these tips here. And I'm going to go into my scene using, let's see, let's just use a grayscale. Memento gray. I'll use a Marvy gray too, just, you know, so you can see. But you don't have to use, you know, one specific brand or anything like that. And then I'll use black, okay? All right, now we have our light source here in this the form of this, um, it's called the Spooky Moon. And then we have, this really holds a lot of ink. Okay, if I get a little bit of a bluish tinge in there, so be it. Um, but just to show you how fast, you know, you can apply your uh, tones into your scene to achieve a... Uh, Kind of a varied and deep space sky area, okay? But let's just start streaking in. So, okay, I've taken off as much gray as I can for right now. I just kind of dab that into a wet paper towel. Tinge of blue is going to come out of that, I'm sure. But, all right, let's keep that moon nice and light, okay? With the cloud space stamp, okay? cloud space in terms of an area, not outer space. Um, there really isn't any specific area of, uh, you know, this imagery, the negative space that you have to keep light, you know. So you're just applying it wherever you want, but I would recommend oscillating your lights and darks a little bit. In other words, just don't color out everything, okay? That's all that really means. Oscillation means, you know, kind of jumping back and forth of something, you know, in this case it'll be value. Okay, and I'm streaking some of this into my areas, the areas that um, are light, or the white of the paper, kind of represent the, you know, the reflected light coming off some vapor. So the cloud space, everything that dark, represents that space in between the clouds, okay? Okay, this is a fairly light gray in terms of value. Gets a good saturation down. I'll put a little bit of this across my moon. I don't want my moon to be too stark white there. Kind of want it to be a little bit hazier in this one. Doesn't mean I want it in all or uh, the moons that I ever do. All right, let's move on up to the gray from Marvy. Eh, it's a little bit more of a neutral gray, but maybe that's because I don't have so much of the blue ink in here anymore after I've kind of, you know, done several swipings of it with the memento. But I'm keeping my swipings here to roughly the same areas that I applied my memento ink in. So in other words, if you have some areas that are kind of light, white of the paper, maybe, you know, don't go through those ones too much. You can go through it a little bit, but we'll retain some of the lighter areas within those um, spaces where it will give the illusion of it being moonlit. 
This area in here I'm going to keep a little bit lighter too because I think that'd be a perfect place for a, a quote. All right, I can put a little bit of tone in there just so it's not so stark white though. All right, that was the gray. I think that is enough. Okay. So we have this going here right now. Very text, very textured. Okay, black is the thing that's going to kind of start bringing everything together because the background is stamped in black. So uh, applying this down. It's a bit of a more of a gray scale because the page is so saturated. Okay, and we're not adding you know straight black ink. We're adding. Um, Kind of more of a lighter, drier application, which has given me variations of gray, as opposed to straight black. Okay, and when you're doing this type of application, that's really what you're doing. I mean, rarely do you do some kind of swipe, and it's a hundred percent version of that ink because that ink isn't being all applied in a real thick slathering of it. Okay. Kind of the darker you make your perimeter, the lighter the light areas within that space are going to seem. Or the darker you make really any type of area, but since we're doing a lot of you know toning over, see this kind of darker area down here will make this area seem lighter by contrast. Okay? Because we're working with contrast, not so much light. We're Kind of depicting light through the use of shade, but it really isn't light, it's just the illusion of it. Okay. If I want to build up a little bit more color or tone, then I can build it up by tapping it a little bit more than streaking it. So you use different types of touches for your different textures and what kind of application you're going after. Kind of toning out some of these uh, super bright areas. I, I want to kind of bring in my shadows a little bit more just to make that moon in the background stand out a little bit more. So, toning out some of this lighter area down here. Not completely, I don't want it black, but it, I just don't want it white. I want more, a little bit more emphasis to be brought into that moon right there, so darkening this area. Put a few streaks in there as well, just to have it varied. Same thing right here, this is a little bit too light right here, I think. So, let's go over it a little bit. It's taking on a nice kind of a texture. I think at this point in time we're starting to see what, you know, I think the background is going to be. In terms of the overall look. <laughs> and again, this is taking a little bit longer. Um, just because the, it's basically yeah, I'm doing two scenes, two quarter page scenes because this one's so big. Ha on the, you know, being the half page. So 
Sometimes you just have to go a little bit bigger, you know, just for some variation. And I'm all into variation. I like to vary my scenes, even if I do the same composition again. You know, I'm going for kind of a different look, you know, on the next one. Um, I don't know. I always want to check out the uh, kind of possibilities of something. So kind of fully exploring everything is always fun, or trying to. That's the goal, you never really fully explore. I don't think what can be done with most media. All right, let's see here. Let's do some of that torn paper towel look in the sky. I'm not getting a very good, varied rip here, but uh, I think I guess it'll do. All right, which way do I want to go? Do I want to go? Uh, let's go with something like this. All right, let's just place this anywhere. I don't know. I don't know about anywhere, but... Yeah, we'll try it for something like this, okay, so... Now, I'm going grayscale on this, but it doesn't mean that I can't add in other types of tones. You know, if I want to add in some color over the top of this, I can. If you do anything like that, I'd probably recommend starting with some very light tones and build it up accordingly, depending on uh, what type of color scheme you like. Okay, see that right there? I think it tends to have a pretty interesting textural um, quality to uh, um, to this technique. Okay, see how that's ripping too easily like that. I, it must be this way. Yeah, there it is. See, it's more kind of varied and jagged. That's what I'm kind of wanting or preferring, you know, in this technique right here. Or, I don't know. In this technique or this scene it might change depending on what I'm doing. Maybe that's too varied. Let's see. Searching for the right rip. Okay, let's do that right here. Kind of remember most of it, you know, the inking is kind of on the paper towel, then as I kind of move it in, you can kind of move it around too, it doesn't have to be a static uh, stationary mask. See, I, do that, and I can kind of move it over here and do some more, or whatever, you know. You don't have to stay in just one area with that mask. You know, once you get it laid down, you can alter it, and it, you know, the scene will be fine. Okay, that's really, uh, that's really looking nice and textured. Look at that. See that torn look in there, what that's kind of building now. Let's go up even higher. 
Let's go up to about right here. Let me take out this bump a little bit. Hmm, let's try, let's try this, okay. Good. Look at this right here. See that bank right there? But look at it over all that texture in there. Look how varied that is and deep. <laughs> okay, let's do this right here. I don't know. I think it looks kind of like a deep space, you know, in terms of spatially. Not deep space in terms of, uh, you know, deep space imagery like, uh, you know, supernovas and black holes and galaxies and whatnot. Just in terms of our little scenes here. I create, you know, creating that separation between uh, the clouds and the moon. Okay. See that right there? I just laid that one down. You have those streaks of the image running through there. Textures building up. Okay, let's do it top. All right. I should probably switch, uh, I should probably re-rip here. Alright, my camera just, mem the memory card ran out. I forgot to delete my uh, previous video from the card before I started this new uh, video. All set now. Adding in some more textures here. Some more shades and some more kind of clouds, or defining some clouds with the use of uh, kind of negative space, space that doesn't um, kind of print out, you know, as we define the edge of it here. see that and I pull it out and you have that see how that looks right here looks it really looks like it's being illuminated by that moon right and here's that tone that I just put down you know it's it's kind of like or it is like that okay see that
I will end this video after I tone in this um, part of the uh, process. Because I probably shouldn't do too many uh, videos, uh, or I shouldn't do a video where I'm toning in, like, working on a lot of like half-page scenes, you know, just because they take longer to do. Um, I should do them one at a time if I'm going to do anything. Uh, one video at a time, I should say. Okay. Okay. Alright. There we go. So, I don't know, doesn't that seem like it... You know, there's layers, then you're going back into here now. Tip the edges, darker um, corners. Four corners to kind of throw a nice vignette onto the scene. A lot of you have done this torn paper towel technique, but for those that haven't, I really recommend you try it. Give it a shot. You'll kind of get it down pretty fast and then, you know, then you can't stop doing it. <laughs> you just kind of keep wanting to add more and more. Not that it really needs it or anything like that, but it's just that it's so much fun. And uh, as I said, if you do this in green tones or whatever over a grassy field. This is the exact technique that you can do. Adding in some streaks. Because there's these kind of striations in the, uh, the images, the cloud space, and the uh, spooky, uh, spooky cloud, spooky moon. So just reiterating, reiterating that kind of spirit in terms of the uh, movement of the uh, design. All right, let's see what we have here. All right, so a lot of texture and depth in here. I prob I'll probably go in and do something to this one, maybe a little tinge of color, maybe, perhaps? Not sure, but oodles of blue on these two. We have that mass paper towel technique up here, and a little bit in here, I think, as well as in here, around in here. Okay, and I'll soften these areas up too. You know, I'm not done with them, but um, I'll save that for a, another video. Um, where I kind of finish these off in terms of uh, doing some uh, pigment ink applications, uh, maybe some splatter painting, definitely um, the uh, um, gel pens, maybe some alcohol pens, and maybe even some other imagery, you know, we can add in here. foreground elements, perhaps.
All right. That is really fun to work on. I think this one's this one has a really nice mood to it in terms of uh I don't know. I don't necessarily see it as spooky. I just called it that because it can be, but like this one right here, it has this really nice glowing light, even if it's um, kind of temperature less. All right, kind of a more I don't know friendly, perhaps I don't know what description could be used, but. I'll go in and I'll really soften up some of these edges right in here with some uh, pigment ink and uh, this is the perfect opportunity for a few little stars in the background and this one there's an opportunity for a lot of stars because we have that kind of that type of texture in the design itself so kind of moving out into these areas around here would be good all right so layering tone masking, building up a little bit of extra depth within the scenes. I haven't forgotten about my warm tone ones. I'll go and I'll do that in a different vid, but I don't know. When your camera starts running out of battery, I mean, uh, memory on your card, even if you forgot to uh, erase some uh, previous video on a gigantic card like I had, it means that it, you should really uh, cut this and turn it into a couple different videos and not have one kind of three hour video going although I think I've done that in the past but hopefully these look like deeper space here I'll show you some more I don't have the before and after here but here is like a cloud right here and this is kind of what these look like before okay I think this looks okay just as is I mean someone could snap a little quote in here or something like that or image or whatnot you know, they can quit here if they want to, but if you want to, if you want to kind of push these more and push the depth, uh, the visual depth and space within a scene, you know, within a bank of clouds, then you can go ahead and do that with additional tones. There's a better example of it without, with extra tones and without. It has a, quite a bit of a different spirit to it, doesn't it? You know, when you lay those colors down like that, so. Anyway, step uh, two out of three or four in the process of um, finishing off these scenes. I don't know, this one just happens to be two really big ones, uh, you know, as far as the average size that I typically use. So, I don't know. Until the next video, and uh, we'll start on some uh, finishing touches on these, I think. All right, thanks for watching.